Um, we are going to move over to our community case study. Uh, today we are joined by Divya from Stripe. So Divya, I will go ahead and hand this over to you. Cool. Um, yeah, let me share my screen here. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. Um, so yeah, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Divya Manahar and I'm a software engineer in data platform at Stripe. I'm based in Seattle, Washington, and I joined a little over a year ago as a new grad. Um, so Stripe has been ramping up with using Data Hub over the past few months in order to solve some of our data observability and timeliness issues that we've been facing. This has included building our own client, which we use to emit metadata about our data sets and batch data jobs, as well as some additional UI features, which we have built um, to fill in some of our past observability gaps. So I'm here to talk about how Stripe has integrated with Data Hub and demo a few of these new UI features as well. Um, so what is Stripe? For some background, Stripe is a payment services provider that lets merchants accept credit and debit card payments online. Stripe's products power payments for online and in-person retailers, subscription businesses, software platforms, and marketplaces. And we also help companies beat fraud, send invoices, get financing, manage business spend, and more. So data platform at Stripe has been trying to solve a number of data observability and timeliness concerns over the past year. And we operate the support, um, we operate and support the infrastructure for complex batch data pipelines and closely monitor their landing times and additional performance metrics every day. Um, this is like have has proven to be a significant amount of manual work for the pipelines owning teams. And teams that own these pipelines were required to write complex database queries or manually click through hundreds of job status pages in order to get informed about how their jobs have been performing over time. Owners also have service level agreements or SLAs in place for themselves and their downstream customers regarding landing time, latency, and freshness of their data. As a result, Teams have resorted to building their own pipeline specific dashboards for more detailed and up close observability into their job performances, causing a disconnect of information and observability tooling across organizations. Um, for example, one of our most important data pipelines is called the Unified Activity Report or UAR for short. This data pipeline consists of nearly a thousand data jobs with very complex dependencies and essentially generates a summary of Stripe users transactions at the end of each month. This pipeline has groups of data jobs owned by various teams at Stripe, and there's a strict 72 hour deadline for this entire pipeline completing. So at the end of each month, designated runners from each owning team would need to manually pull up their job status pages and dashboards and communicate with each other the progress of their portion of the pipeline. The only method for determining the current status um, and delays in the pipeline was to rely on runners to communicate that in our UAR Slack channel. And there's a lot of stress and manual work involved in monitoring UAR every month and answering a question as simple as how far are we currently in the UAR pipeline was often really difficult to answer. As a result of this lack of observability into historical trends of data job performance, as well as critical pipeline statuses, we wanted a unified data catalog that all teams could visit to get quick and easy insights into their jobs runtime, latency, SLA misses, as well as a team's pipeline status and estimated delivery times. And Data Hub was a great solution for this as it provides complete discoverability into metadata about jobs and data sets. And we were able to build some additional UI features to support our most important observability needs. Um, in order to set up some context with how we build our client and how we are sending metadata over to Data Hub, I wanted to talk about our system for running our data jobs, which is Airflow. Airflow is essentially our infrastructure for scheduling and running batch data jobs, which are known as tasks, and is currently our only metadata source for Data Hub. We have thousands of tasks running every hour, which produce data sets that our consumers care about. However, there's a disconnect between the data sets that are produced and the data jobs which produce them. So in order to make this connection for a particular task, we're often required to search through runtime logs to determine what are the input and output data sets being consumed and produced. Additionally, the Airflow UI doesn't give us much flexibility in creating dashboards to showcase insights into historical trends and job performance, as well as showcasing the dependencies between the tasks. Um, the UI is more useful for just monitoring the current state of a particular task, as well as debugging task failures through logs. Additionally, in Airflow, we have many cross-DAG dependencies that are not visible in the UI, 
um, meaning that in order to under get an understanding of complete dependencies between tasks and data sets end to end, we need to manually click through various tasks and DAGs and build a mental model of what our entire pipeline looks like. So we can see in this video, just to view the relationship between two tasks that are in different DAGs, we have to click through many pages to understand that. So doing this for a pipeline such as UAR is nearly impossible given the amount of tasks and data sets involved, as well as the complex um, dependencies that exist. So here we can see how our client, um, how we set up our client in order to emit metadata change proposals to Data Hub. So once a worker pulls a task added to the queue by the Airflow scheduler, the task instance will start running. Um, just before the task begins to run, we call our client to emit metadata about the task instance. So this includes the data flow event, which corresponds to the Airflow DAG, the data job event, which corresponds to the Airflow task with information including upstream and downstream data jobs, as well as custom properties, including SLAs that were configured on the job, as well as the jobs owning team. All of this information is pulled from the task configuration code, which is written by job owners. Additionally, we send a data process instance event, which, is, which includes information about the specific task instance run, such as the start and end time, um, the state of the task instance, and the logical date for the task to run. And finally, we emit two sets of data set events, one for upstream data sets that the job takes as input, and secondly, for the downstream data sets that the job produces. And all these ent um, entities exist on the open source data hub project already. Um, and these metadata change proposal events are then emitted to a Kafka topic where the schema for the event is looked up in the schema registry to help serialize the payload to Kafka. And ultimately, the data is ingested by the data hub metadata service or data hub GMS. So one thing to note um, is that we have anywhere from five to 30 tasks emitting metadata to Data Hub every second. And a single task can potentially produce over hundred entities based on its tasks and data set dependencies. Um, so due to the sheer volume of events being emitted, we were originally experiencing some load issues causing a delay in the Kafka consumer. Um, so we decided to only send over the data process instance entity on completion callbacks and not start callbacks um, of the task instance, such as when the task succeeds or fails, goes up for retry or is skipped. And in order to reduce the number of entities being emitted, since really the only information changing between the start and completion callbacks of a task instance um, is the end date and the state of the task instance. We use the callback type to determine what instance run result type to send over to Data Hub. And additionally, we have configured a five second timeout on the client in order to prevent any significant changes in task runtime that could cause delays in our critical pipelines. So next up, I'm gonna be talking about some of our most critical observability needs and the UI features that we've built as solutions. So to begin with, users wanted an easy way to track SLA misses and historical trends in their jobs start and landing times, which is essentially the duration between the logical date for the task instance to run and the time that the task has started or completed. So as an example, this is a data job that we have um, in Data Hub called IC plus dot daily IC plus fees. Um, so users can, job owners can essentially set different types of SLAs on their task. They can set both started by and finished by SLAs. And for each of those, they can set different levels. So they can set either a worn level or an error level. Um, so this page kind of exposes different SLA misses um, as well as the latest run for this um, task. So we can see for the latest run, it was scheduled on 927. Um, we can see when it started running, how long it ran for, and we can see now it's in the finished state. We can see exactly what time it finished and how much time was remaining until it hit its end error SLA. Um, so this job doesn't have any start SLA set, but we also expose information about how many runs um, finished over SLA, the percentage, and on average, how much we were delayed by. We can select a number of runs to view here. And this chart kind of shows us um, trends in landing times. So the bottom value of each of these columns corresponds to the start time of the task instance, and the top value corresponds to the end time. So the, the taller the column, um, the longer the task took to run. So we can kind of see a trend here. Um, blue means we didn't miss any SLAs. Yellow means we missed a worn SLA, and red means we missed the error SLA. And for each of these task instance runs, we can see more granular information, including the execution date, 
when it started and ended and duration, the state and how long is left until SLA or how far we went over SLA. Um, and if we want to kind of triage, okay, why did I miss SLA on this day? We can click into here and see the actual airflow task and logs. So yeah, this is kind of our timeliness page and this exists on all of our data jobs. Um, so one of the next concerns that we wanted to address was being able to quickly and easily determine the status of an entire pipeline. So for example, in the case of UAR, which I mentioned earlier, we wanted a dashboard that all runners could visit at the end of each month to track the progress of the pipeline so owners were not reliant on Slack messages to triage delays. So this is kind of what our pipeline timeliness dashboard looks like for UAR specifically. So again, UAR consists of nearly a thousand tasks and we didn't want to display all a thousand tasks in this view. So we kind of split up the entire pipeline into chunks, um, which are logical groupings of tasks, mostly in a chronological order owned by different teams. And um, those chunks we call segments. And for each of those segments, we identified two or three kind of critical tasks within that segment. So that might be the terminal task in the segment or just a critical task that teams typically monitor during the UAR run. So on the left-hand side, the, this is a list of all of the different segments that we have listed in a chronological order. So we can see for this pipeline, we're somewhere between the daily estimate segment and the spark model cost segment. Um, but of course, since there's a lot of complex dependencies here, some segments run in parallel. So we can see that this segment is still in progress. So um, we can also for this entire dashboard, choose a specific run to look at and we can see the pipeline's entire status. It's currently in progress, as well as an estimated landing time and what the current time is. And within each of these individual segments, we can view exactly what tasks we are um, looking at. And within each of these tasks, we can also see um, more metadata. So the state of the latest task run, um, who to contact in case there are any delays or SLA misses, um, the average landing time current run landing time, as well as a link to the airflow task in the airflow UI. And we can also for each task view more information about previous runs. So we display the seven latest runs, as well as the previous same day of week run and previous end of month run. And the reason that we do that is we learned from our users that whenever they're um, monitoring their tasks in this view, they wanna be able to compare their landing time to previous landing times. So we wanted to kind of show all that information so they could easily estimate when their task would land or how long it's expected to run for. And we also discovered that a lot of tasks have um, different run durations based on the day of week or the time of month. So we wanted to kind of display all that information. And again, we can kind of see this for all views um, and some of these tasks don't have SLAs and we also have kind of a naive um, predictions for when these tasks will land. Um, and also one other thing to note is that in order to, this page is entirely self-serve. So users can actually just from the data hub UI go and add tasks into segments here. So for example, um, this risk.merchant state task is in the risk DS segment. Um, and so if we go to the data job page for this task, we can see that it has the UAR entity on it and we use tags to define what segment it's in. So we kind of um, overloaded tags in that way. And so we can see that we defined it as the risk DS tag. So coming back here, um, finally, we wanted to give users a self-serve way to also build their own historical SLA tracking dashboard in Data Hub and have the flexibility to add whatever data jobs they deem critical to the page. This also gives leadership a high level um, view of how our platform is performing for our major customers. So this is our historical SLA tracking page um, for our most critical data jobs. So we can see in a timeline view um, how much over or under SLA they were and it's split up by team. So these are part of the growth team and these tasks are part of the cost team. Um, and for each of these tasks, we expose information about the percentage of times they met their deadline, um, P90 and P80 delivery, and a link to the task um, as well. And, and so if since these are all on the same timeline, 
if we see a lot of red, say on August 1st, for example, then we would know, okay, like our infrastructure must have been degraded or having issues at that time. Um, and so this is very useful for our leadership to kind of track how we're doing. And again, for each of these runs, we can see more granular information, including um, the state, the execution date, um, and start and end times. And again, this page is completely self-serve, so users can go into um, a specific job and just add it to this entity, and it will appear in this page. So I actually wanted to talk about how um, we have this um, critical data jobs and UAR um, entity set up. So we actually created a new entity called user defined reports, which both of these sit under. This is very, very similar to the current domains entity that already exists in Data Hub, um, except we can add multiple of these user defined reports to a particular, to a single data job. Um, and additionally, for a user defined report, we can select if we want it to be either pipeline timeliness, which is that UAR dashboard that you saw or historical timeliness dashboard. So we can create a new user defined report here, select what type that we want it to be and add data jobs to that to build either a pipeline, pipeline timeliness dashboard or historical SLA tracking dashboard. So yeah, um, to wrap things up, we are continuing to work with our most prominent data owners and Airflow users to build additional features that um, we can help them monitor their data jobs. Um, we are building additional features, including data job expected landing times with regards to upstream landing times and delays. And we've also done a bit of work to just expose job ownership information in the UI. Um, we will eventually add more system integrations and expand on the user defined report entity to allow for different types of reporting as more use cases pop up as well. Um, we're also hoping to upstream some of these features to the open source project once we gavel internally. Um, and we're planning to do that sort of one by one for each of these features. We've had a great experience integrating with Data Hub, and it's already proved to be super useful um, as a tool for our data job owners. So thank you so much, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed the demo. And you can find me in the Data Hub Slack space, and my email is listed here as well. So thank you. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Divya. Um, highly recommend taking a look at chat. There's a ton of love in there. Um, I think it's safe to say we're pretty much blown away at the work you guys have put together. And wow, thanks for walking us through that. It's like my mind is blown in terms of all of the things that we can be doing and will be doing in the near future. It's so cool. All right. Um, we are going to move on to